Hi, hello. Welcome to the laboratory of digital storytelling. Today we are going to start with the writing of our project. And uh, if you remember, we have been talking about the genre. So today we are going to start defining our projects in terms of genre. You might think, what does uh, the genre has to do with fairy tales? Aren't all fairy tales part of the same genre? Well, you might have a point. The fairy tales are all parts of the same kind of uh, literature or tradition. If you think about that, in fact, they are folklore. They are stories that belong to the different cultures. Sometimes uh, we observe, and this is one of the most important um, elements within the anthropology, that the stories can migrate from one culture to another. So actually we are talking about universal tales. The thing is that uh, when we talk about fairy tales, we usually refer to uh, stories that have some kind of fantastic element. Okay, and in relation to the moral, this kind of uh, learning point, it's not really mandatory. It's not like a fable, for example. Uh, the moral in the fairy tales is usually associated to the consequences of the story or the different uh, transformations that the character might suffer during the uh, narrative program. However, fairy tales can be surviving in the modern media through different genres. And because right now we are more familiar with genres within literature or within um, uh, cinema or even video games, it might be important to understand that genres are much more than uh, themes. Genres are much more than particular, spatial or temporal settings. Genres are about formulas, are about narratives that are repeated, that are constructed through uh, the imitation of previous narratives. Think, for example, about horror stories. What is exactly the most important element of the horror story? Well, there might be many. You might think of horrors like psycho killers. Oh, there is a person who is uh, chasing all the people, a group of people, usually, you know, teenagers, etc. That's a formula, of course. Uh, another way of looking at this is as a more philosophical assumption. Horror are always uh, stories about the uh, human condition. A human condition is a tragedy. And of course, horror is about the creation of images, sometimes images of blood, or uh, aberrations. Horror is about the images that are difficult to process or are uh, itself very disturbing. Horror depends always on the character. We could say that many stories would depend on the character, of course. Character is one of the most important elements in a storytelling. But the thing is, if you understand horror as a uh, something that it's shared between you and the character. That is basically what you have to construct, to have to construct emotions that can be transferred. And the horror that the character is feeling is the, the horror that you want to transmit to the audience. And of course, if you think about that, there are elements of horror in many, many uh, fairy tales. For example, you create life, but then the, the life reveals the life is not what you expect it to be. So it can be Jurassic Park, but it could be also Pinocchio, for example. Horror can be also uh, the fear to the uh, beloved ones to be betrayed or to be, um, to be, you know, physically in danger. So horror can be as well uh, your family environment. Think about Cinderella, it's a family abuse. Or think about Bluebeard. Horror is also tragedy when there is an element of revenge. Okay, I think if 
like uh, Hamily uh, Piper, and of course, all elements related to human condition, to get old, to die, to be lonely. All these elements are also part of what they are fairy tales. Changing years, we have uh, also the romance, one of the most uh, popular genres within, uh, you know, modern media. So romance are the paradigm of uh, uh, all these uh, anticipated pleasures. Uh, we have commented this in the lesson, and the point is, in romance, we know what is going to happen, and that is part of the pleasure. We know that we are not going to be surprised. We are going to like it because it's going to be what we expect it to be. Still, we have some elements there, innocence, betrayal, you know, loops, the, the pass of the time. What you are not going to have are surprise, obviously. Emotional soundtracks, nowadays very popular to use pop songs, but maybe time ago, you know, composing classical, uh, beautiful uh, music for all these uh, uh, romances. And uh, of course, everything is constructed uh, to get to the moment, uh, the moment of truth, the moment of when are they going finally to, you know, meet or to meet again, to re-encounter. That's, that's romance. The reason is that romance uh, and musicals have a long tradition. They are uh, very related to each other. And in modern times, we are more familiar with fairy tales thanks to the work of uh, Disney movies. So thinking of that, we think that uh, Disney movies are related to romance, but also related to musicals, Hollywood musicals. And in that sense, uh, we think that most of the fairy tales are romantic or are musicals, but not necessarily. Another popular genre nowadays, many, many years ago, of course, is all the stories related to science fiction and fantasies. There are important distinctions between science fiction and fantasy. In fact, a science fiction would be considered just a kind of sub-kind, a kind of uh, different kinds of fantasy. Fantasy is usually constructed through allegory and through the construction of a world that is um, uh, autonomous, works even when we are not accessing to that. It's very coherent, very complex. For example, a world that is uh, populated by elves, dwarfs or dragons or a world that has magic. The difference in science fiction is that we define something called the novum, and this is a distinction very, very traditional in science fiction. It's the element of scientific innovation. For example, in uh, The Matrix, the technology that allows you to uh, live uh, the other experiences, uh, to implement the different knowledge directly into your brain. That's, that's pure uh, science fiction, of course. But what about fairy tales? Think about the uh, stories like nothing is what it seems, okay? A world that discovers things that are against logic, or maybe because they have their own logic. It's a world that is totally parallel to ours. So we have Alice in Wonderland, or we have The Matrix, or we have many other stories like uh, Total Recall or um, The Man in High Castle or something like that. You can uh, move at the same time that the world moves or you can move faster or you can move slower. A time traveler is basically a recreation of Ripa Wilkie. Uh, you uh, wake up and suddenly you are 40 years older, or you are not from this world anymore. Again, the story of Pinocchio, or uh, even going farther, no? the, all the Greek myths like Prometheus, is uh, creating things, things that are so complex or are so challenging that they were not supposed to be created by men. And therefore, uh, the story is going to tell you, mm, you are doing something that you are not supposed to do as human. This is a sin, and you're going to pay for that. So that is the artificial intelligence. We are creating humans. And of course, all the stories related to adventure, new world, and uh, 
explorer. Whatever we are talking about the space explorers, or we are talking about uh, just uh, fairy tales like uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. This would be basically uh, the first version of Gulliver's Travels, which is a very famous novel. And for many people, the first science fiction novel ever. So what about crime, mystery? If you like uh, crime movies or mystery movies, you will know that it's all about information. The main character is usually the person who is discovering all the truth. Discovering all the truth is only to order the story in the right order. Because, as you know, we don't usually know who killed the person at the very beginning. For example, in the killing, in the story of a killing. We first find the result of that event. And then later we, we get all the other information. So it is very common to create these kind of puzzles. This kind of stories where not everything is ordered, not everything is clear. You need to make some effort to understand uh, what is going on. But also in crime and mystery, there are uh, plot twists and there are surprises. Everyone can be the killer. And that is something that we have also in, in some fairy tales. Think, for example, in the Red Little Riding Hood. There are surprises. There are twists. There are things you wouldn't expect. Like, for example, the wolf dressed as the grandma. Okay. I mean, obviously, it's a fantasy setting. There would be a crime. And you might not notice. You might just be the victim. You might need to run. So think about Hansel and Gretel. Okay. Bluebeard as well. Or uh, think about uh, something that will happen in the future, but because it is not very clear, it is a prophecy, there is a, an element there, one day this will happen. But you don't realize until the end of the story that the prophecy is finally coming to uh, reality. And of course, uh, the mysteries are also things like the mystery room. Why I cannot enter in that room? We have seen some of the most common uh, genres within the modern media, and we have established parallels with other fairy tales. And of course, uh, as commented before, fairy tales depends on the folklore. So you might have thousands of thousands of examples that you would like to explore on your own, and that's perfectly fine. When you talk about genres, you talk also usually about comedy, drama, melodrama. These are uh, classical genres. In fact, comedy, drama, and tragedy are the three classical uh, kinds of drama that are defined by Aristotle. So basically the, the history of literature. And again, because comedy, drama, and melodrama, and even tragedy are what we call super genres, are classical genres, it is difficult to think that something that is a drama or a comedy is not going to be at the same time a romance or a, a thriller or a science fiction. It's going to have always these kind of elements. So that is why it is better to understand that genres are piece of hybridization. They are mixtures. They are blended always. And that's how everything uh, comes again to the exercise. You have to define your project in terms of genre and your story, if has any anything to do with the fairy tales, it might be already having something of a genre, the genre of the fairy tales. It might have fantastic elements. It might have a moral well or not well defined. It might have... Uh, a setting that is uh, undefined, like once upon a time. It doesn't really matter. All these things can be or not. You decide which elements you want to keep from your genre. But now is when you can start blending, blending all these genres and trying to see what you create. Would it be uh, including more of a crime movie, more of a romance, more of a fantasy or a science fiction? What would you like to tell about this story, about this uh, myth, this uh, fairy tale that you 
took uh, as a mainly starting point. But only that, only the starting point. The rest is something you have to write. 